If the concept of suffering did not exist, would you suffer? Have letter number 5914. February 2, 2017. There is something so deep and precious within you that you hardly dare to fathom. Beloveds, what do you think would happen if you dared to drink deeply of love abounding? To sink deeply within, which you may fear, is to fly. To sink deeply into love is to soar high above suffering. It is to discover yourself where you are and have been all along. Heretofore, you may have trembled at what seemed to be a dismal fate that, you were sure, had convoluted itself before you. Beloveds, you yourself are the topic I dwell on. Come drink healing waters with me. We will talk about love for the enhancement of the world. Sometimes, a world filled with love is held at a distance, barely in sight. This is suffering. Never think that suffering is somehow an honor. Make suffering not paramount or the honor of the day in the attention of a world sodden in grief. Suffering has nothing to offer you that you want. And never do I want you to promote suffering as if it were an exalted status. Because suffering comes free doesn't mean that you don't pay too high a price for it. There is nothing desirable about suffering until it leaves. Do you have the idea that suffering is admirable? Is illness admirable? Is heartache admirable? Suffering isn't even packaged well. Suffering is not a hero's journey. Let us abolish suffering from the face of earth. Let us abandon suffering. Who said suffering is a worthy activity? Suffering is not a requirement for life. Don't romanticize it. Don't give suffering any amount of applause. If suffering has come to pay you a visit, now tell suffering to be on its way and leave you and the world in peace. Suffering is absolutely not to be proliferated. Escort suffering to the door and graciously bow yourself out, never to return. You don't have to have it. There is nothing noble about suffering, not at all. Suffering is not your due. Suffering is not worthy. Of course, you may have a hidden notebook that says that, under certain conditions, there are rules for suffering, as if you are ordained to suffer. Erase those conditions. What power would suffering have on you then? Have no belief in suffering. Suffering is not okay. Suffering is out of sync. Suffering is wayward. Who in his right mind would endorse suffering? And yet, who has not experienced it? A baby drops his rattle, and then the baby cries. A loved one's life ends, and grief walks in the door as an important guest, as if love without suffering could be downright insulting and heartless, as if being away from suffering would be a great act of selfishness and irresponsibility and unheard of. How craven of you, the world might say, not to suffer in a world of suffering, how base. In this life, it would seem that there is no substitute for suffering. Why major in it? Why spread old wives' tales about it? Why make yourself an expert in suffering? Now make suffering an exception to the rule. Be free of it. Ah, suffering must be a tradition. There is much suffering passed on from one generation to another. Once upon a time, women's feet were bound, and this suffering was accepted as necessary and virtuous. Once upon a time, scalps were collected. Once upon a time, children cried every night before they fell asleep. Too many matters were entwined and considered part of life. Let's define suffering differently. Now ask, what is suffering the absence of? Is it possible that possession and inheritance of suffering mean more to you than its absence? Are you possibly more loyal to suffering than to freedom from it? Channeled by Gloria Wendroff. HeavenLetters.org